Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be looking at my new, improved, enlarged, <laughs> revised main watercolour palette. I tend to have a main palette with lots of different colours in. It contains all of my favourites and also colours that are good for mixing as well. And then I have lots of smaller palettes um, because I'm a big colour palette addict. I just love making colour palettes, it's one of my favourite things to do, whichever medium it's in, whether it's pencils or paints or whatever, and so I like to make themed palettes. But today we're just going to be looking at this one because I've recently changed it. Those of you who have watched my previous videos will probably know that this was my main watercolour palette. So this was from Jackson's um, and it has three rows. I could fit, because I had half pans in here, I managed to fit 39 different colours in here. I put together this palette, it was actually earlier this year, so I've been using it for a few months, um, but obviously I had new colours that I wanted to incorporate and when you get more used to something, when you've been using it for a while, you actually get to know what you need and what you really like so you kind of refine things along the way. I'm very much that type of person, nothing is set in stone for me so if I put together a palette it's not going to stay that way forever so um, I will adapt it and revise it. So yeah, this palette came from Jackson's. As I said, it held 39 half pans, which was pretty good. That was a nice range of colors. By the way, the little bird sticker on the front is from Fiona at Particle Press. She does really beautiful nature-inspired artwork. Really love her stuff. Um, as you can see, <laughs> I have another one that I've put on the new palette. I thought it could be like a nice little tribute to the original palette to put the same sticker on. I want you to know also that this palette will not be um, unused or going to waste. I actually have some really exciting Indian watercolours that I'm going to be showing you hopefully within the next week. Um, that I'm going to be putting in this palette. They'll be perfect for that. And I should just show you actually before we go any further, this, <laughs> this scrawled mess, <laughs> it didn't look like this initially. Um, this was my little swatch card that I kept in the palette. I'm going to show you the new one. Should I mention the stickers first? Maybe I will. So yeah, we have Fiona's sticker here. This lovely little one, I'm going to hold it up a bit closer. This was a gift from um, one of my fellow art YouTubers called Christiana. Her channel is Crixis. I've mentioned her before. I love this. <laughs> it says, I'm a slow artist and that's okay because I always feel like I'm a really slow artist. I look at the amount of work that other people get finished and I think, how on earth did you manage to do that in that time? So yeah, I'm a slow artist and as Christiana says, it's okay. These really sassy little sheep but this one's munching on grass and this one has turned its butt to you it's just saying no um, these were from Sarah Burns she has a channel here on YouTube you probably know her Sarah Burns studio um, she lives up in Scotland and both of these artists by the way I just love their channels they are among my favorite channels they do amazing vlogs and um, there's a lot of information as well on different art materials on both channels. Both really interesting. Anyway, check them out. I'll try to remember to either put the names on the screen or I'll put them in the description beneath the video. But yeah, so I just thought I'd decorate it with those stickers because Sarah sent those to me the other week and um, I really like this sassy sheep. Okay, so I'm going to show you the little swatch sheet or rather the quite large swatch sheet in this palette. I'm ridiculously proud of this palette. I should just say that straight away. Um, I'm prouder of this watercolor palette than a person should be about a watercolor palette. Just look at that. Is that not a thing of beauty? Those colors. 
<laughs> I've put so much thought and effort into this palette. So I want to show you, I was really pleased when I put together the first one. I filled this palette with, as I said, um, a lot of my favorite colors and some good mixing colors. You'll see that I've written all over it now because I was using it as the basis for this palette, working out um, which paints I was going to take out, which I was going to add, where they were going to go and so on. So we'll just put that aside for now. You'll see that I have in this palette some full pans as well as half pans. That's because I bought five Roman Schmoll paints that I loved so much they had to go in my main palette. So what we're gonna do is we're going to just look at these colors in more detail. I'm basically gonna swatch them out for you because even though you can see them on this swatch sheet, I think it'd be really nice to see larger swatches and I can just talk to you about the colors and um, tell you a little bit more about them, about why I included them. And I am just so happy every time I look at this palette. <laughs> It's just ridiculous how happy it makes me to look at these colors. This to me is so inspiring. People often ask me whether you can mix brands within one palette, and the answer is definitely yes. I think most artists probably do this. In this palette, I've written it all down here so that I didn't forget. I've got it to the side of me. I have 11 different brands in this palette. Daniel Smith is winning with 21 um, different paints in here, so 21 out of the 47 are Daniel Smith, seven are Schmincke Horadam, five are Roman Small, I have four Jackson's own brand, two Windsor and Newton Professional, two Holbein Artists, two M. Graham, one Sennelier, one Memery Blue, um, one Handmade Watercolor, and one Royal Talons Rembrandt. I actually made a note of the paints I took out of this palette and obviously the ones I added as well. So the ones I took out, um, I took out the Daniel Smith Lamp Black and the Winsor & Newton Professional Titanium White. I just decided that I wasn't really using them that much. I didn't really feel like I needed black and white in this palette. Um, so I've kind of replaced the black with the M. Graham neutral tint. So in mass tone, it looks quite black. It's just a more interesting dark color, really. Diluted, it looks really beautiful. Obviously, it's a good mixing color as well. So I felt like it was kind of more versatile than having the lamp black. And I just wasn't using the titanium white that much, so I took that out. I will use them, I'm just not gonna have them in this palette. I also took out the Daniel Smith Zoisite. Now this is one of my favorite colors, but it just seemed quite similar to some of the other colors I had in here. And even though I have 47 colors, I still wanted to put more in. <laughs> So I really had to edit down and just choose um, a range of colors that I felt work together. Um, it's kind of similar to the Zoisite this is. It's kind of similar to the Roman Schmoll Vivianite and it's not dissimilar to some of these other really dark greens. So I kind of thought I will take it out. Um, I'm using it in other palettes anyway so um, yeah I will continue using that color. I love it. It's just Basically, it was too similar. I also took out the Jackson's Burnt Sienna. Now, I normally like to have Burnt Sienna in my palettes, but this one was a particularly transparent, um, quite light version of Burnt Sienna, and I found I just wasn't really using it. So I stuck with the Jackson's Venetian Red, um, and I thought if I want a reddish brown, I will just mix it with either perhaps the Daniel Smith Bloodstone or the Jackson's Warm Sepia. Um, and that seemed, it seemed a little bit more opaque, had a bit more strength. And so, yeah, that's why I took that out. The other two I took out were the Windsor & Newton Professional Indigo and also the Daniel Smith Fuchsite. Both colors I absolutely love, um, but I just found I wasn't really using the Fuchsite very much. Um, I think it's a beautiful colour, but I just don't use it that much. And I wanted this palette to be paints that I really am going to make the most of. Also, the Windsor & Newton Indigo, because I added some more blues to this palette, I kind of felt like it was unnecessary really to have the Indigo in there again. 
So those are the paints I took out of the palette. I think what I'll do, instead of talking, 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 is start swatching now, and I can tell you which ones have been added as I'm swatching. So let's have a look at them. So my plan is to just fill this entire page with the colours, and I'm just gonna swatch in a very natural way, <laughs> kind of organic swatches. So you'll see what I mean as I go along. I just thought it might be fun to do it like this. Okay, the first one is Daniel Smith Buff Titanium. So I'm gonna do these kind of organic shapes. I mustn't make them too large or I won't fit everything on the page because we have 47 different colors here. I love the Daniel Smith Buff Titanium. Such a nice color. By the way, to swatch, I'm using the Betty Hayways number no. seven brush. It's a nice size to do these kind of swatches. So the cool yellow I have in my palette is the Daniel Smith Hansa Yellow Light. Um, this is a good mixing yellow. I mean, I very rarely use yellow like this in my work, but I've got it in here as a good mixer. So bright. And the next one along is Daniel Smith New Gamboge. This is a warm yellow. In fact, both of these yellows came in I think it was the Daniel Smith Essentials mixing set, I think it's called, or something like that. I've had them for quite a while now. Um, you get six different mixing colours in this little set, and these two were the yellows. Oh, that is a lovely warm yellow. I'm just going to lift out some of that. Um, the next one along is another yellow and this time it's the Naples yellow, the Jackson's Naples yellow. Um, I really like this if I'm going to go for a yellow I would probably go for a Naples yellow because it's very subtle. <laughs> it's not super bright like the others and it's a lot more natural. By the way, the Jackson's own brand watercolours are really nice. They're not too expensive, they're artist grade, and they're really creamy and nice to use. So if you're looking for a good, reasonably affordable watercolour, you should look into Jackson's. I've been impressed with both their own brand um, acrylics and watercolours actually. So this is also one of theirs. This is their yellow ochre. I always have a yellow ochre in my palette. It's a colour that I love using. I love these earthy colours. It's really fun to swatch like this. Makes a change from just doing rectangles. There was a time I swatched in circles. <laughs> I have some choosing keeping videos where I swatch the paints in circles, but it takes a little bit longer because you have to be more precise. So the next one along in the top row of my palette is actually the only handmade watercolour I have in this palette. It's the Peach Haze by a UK Etsy seller um, and maker of watercolours called Beyond Indigo and I love their watercolours because they're just again so creamy they re-wet beautifully and have really interesting colours as well look at that such a pretty colour so yeah I think I had two of these for some reason and I decided to put one in my main palette so yeah, it's the only handmade watercolour in this palette. And the next one is kind of similar, but not identical. And it's the Schmincke Horodam Naples Yellow Reddish. 
They look quite similar when they're wet, but they do dry up differently. The Naples Yellow Reddish actually looks a little bit more orange when it's dry than the Peach Haze. Okay, we're going to be moving on to the reds now. So the first one is the Jackson's Venetian Red. This is a lovely, rich, brownish, earthy kind of red. All of these colours so far were in my previous palette. We haven't come across any of the new ones yet. So the next one along is the super bright <laughs> Daniel Smith Transparent Pyrol Orange. This one always looks really red to me. Such a bright, gorgeous colour. Be interesting actually to maybe do a separate video where I see how many interesting colours I could mix from this palette. And then the next red we have is kind of softer. It's the Winsor & Newton Professional Watercolour Rose Duray. Love this one. It's quite transparent. actually held up quite well in my light fast tests which I was pleased about but I had had it in the palette anyway um, because I did think it would do okay it does have I think a light fast rating of two one being their highest so the next red is from the um, Daniel Smith Essentials mixing set again if that's what it's called i think it is <laughs> and this is pyrol scarlet so yeah this is in here as a mixing color really when all of these are dry at the end i'll hold them up and you can have a closer look at them i'll hold them closer to the camera so the next one dries a bit like a rock in the pan. So you do have to re-wet this one. This is the Daniel Smith Red Fuchsite, but it will re-wet. Just needs a little bit longer to sort of reactivate. But this one, lovely earthy colour and um, also has a slight pearlescence to it as well. And the final one from the top row is Daniel Smith Luna Red Rock. Where shall we swatch that? Maybe we'll go like this. Gosh, that's such a gorgeous colour. Really dark, um, it's brownish red. Looks a little bit like Kaput Mortem to me. Never know whether I'm saying that properly actually. I've had so many different pronunciations. Um, I don't know what's right anymore. <laughs> you know the colour I mean. And that one is really nice and creamy. So moving on to the next row, I have Winsor & Newton Caput Mortem Violet. It's an interesting, slightly more violet toned take on Kaput Morton. I also have pencils in this colour and I love them. Oh look at that, so beautiful. I'm going to try and just lift it off a little bit so we get some variation in this swatch. It's a bit like a kidney bean that one. <laughs> okay, the next one along is a Schmincke Horridan paint and it's the Perylene Violet. I'm going to do that one down here. Oh, look at that. Wow, that colour. I think someone recommended this one to me and um, I checked it out and I was like, yep, I need that colour. 
Who was it who was asking me the other day? Somebody asked me whether um, I had like a paint that was similar to one of the handmade paints I have by Dan Barrett. It's called Dusk. Um, I'm actually thinking that this one might be sort of similar to that, but obviously without having them side by side, I can't really tell, but you know what? I think it is kind of similar. So whoever that was who asked me, I'm sorry, I can't remember now because he stopped making the dusk color. And this is why she wanted to know. I think you could try this um, Perylene Violet, Schmincke Horridam. Okay, the next one is a new one in this palette. And it is the Royal Talons Rembrandt Dusk Pink. Now, I was running a light fast test on this and I have been longing to put this in my palette. It did really well. I saw absolutely no change. Um, it had been on the windowsill right throughout the summer for like seven months and... Or was it six months for that one? I don't know. Anyway, very, I think it was pretty much seven months. I didn't see any change in it. It just is so gorgeous. It's quite granulating. And as you can see, it's really, really dark. I've actually ordered from Jackson's. So impressed with this one, the dusk pink. I've ordered the dusk green because um, that looked gorgeous as well. I'm kind of wanting their dusk yellow. I keep saying I'm not going to buy any more watercolours because I have so many watercolours, but I mean, I know it's my job and <laughs> this is, you know, it's perfectly allowed. Of course, I can have as many watercolours as I like, but I do actually want to use them. You know, I don't want to have so many that I can't use them. But then they just keep bringing out so many gorgeous colours. What can you do? I mean, this may have been out for years, for all I know. To me, it's new, but I'm probably um, I'm probably late to the party with the dusk pink. But that is so beautiful. Okay, next one along is one of my favourite pinks. It's um, a Potter's Pink. I really like the Winsor & Newton version, and I like this one, which is the Schmincke Horridam version. They're both really nice. I'm just going to pop that in there. Gorgeous, natural, earthy pink. The last few colours are really right up my street. Sorry if you keep hearing a tinkling thing. Those of you who are regular viewers, you'll probably know if the camera's picking up that tinkling sound. It's our ring camera security system. Security camera system, <laughs> however you say it. Um, when someone goes past or something goes past, it sets it off. Yeah, you'll be able to see these much better at the end when I bring them up close. I'm thinking, just sitting here looking at these, that was that one the Lunar Red Rock? And that one is the Winsor & Newton Caput Morton Violet. They, they look quite similar when they're wet, actually. They are slightly different when they're dry. I'm looking at have this in front of me, the um, little swatch sheet, so I can see them, um, see how they look when they're dry, so I can see they are slightly different. Okay, next pink along is a gorgeous bright one, and this is the Daniel Smith Quinacridone Rose. Shall I do this here? Yeah, maybe. Oh, look at that. I really like the Daniel Smith Quinacridone Rose. I'm wondering, did I get that in that little mixing set as well? I think I might have done. So that one was in the palette before, but we're now going on to one that has just been added. Um, I was worried this one was going to fade, but I didn't see any difference in my light fast test. Um, so it's now in the palette. Um, it's the Holbein Shell Pink. I think it's such a pretty colour and I know there may have been people who perhaps have had a problem with this one fading but um, I didn't. Um, I couldn't see any difference. I really expected it to change and it didn't. So 
Can you see that? Is that on camera? Oh yeah, it is just about. Sorry, my chair makes a weird noise when I get up. <laughs> I have my eye on an ergonomic kind of stool thing that you can have at your desk and adjust it to various heights and so on. Um, it's available from Ikea but they're out of stock at the moment. They've been out of stock for months online and I think it would be really good to go with this desk that I have which is the sit stand desk, the flexi spot one, that they very kindly gifted me. Um, earlier this year but um, I would like an ergonomic stool to go with it so I'm hoping that they come back into stock on Ikea sometime soon. Right the next one is ah, another new one is the Roman Schmall Mineral Violet this is so pretty it's kind of a slightly separating colour I'm just gonna make sure I mix lots of water with this one you can really see what it does. You'll see how pretty these Roman small paints are and why I needed to find space for them in my palette. It's really nice to swatch like this. I'm having fun doing it this way. I think I am going to have to make some of these swatches of it. So we're getting bigger and bigger, aren't we, as we're going along. This always happens. I need to make these smaller or I'm not going to fit them all in. And I'd like to have them all on one page. Okay, the next one sitting alongside it in the palette is the Roman Schmall Shadow Violet. Um, another gorgeous separating colour. I find these Roman Schmall paints really interesting. There's some really interesting colours and the formulation always seems to re-wet really well. And the next one along was in the original palette but it's one of my favourite paints of all time and it's the Schmincke Horadam Tundra Pink. It's one of their um, special edition granulating paints. I kind of feel like it goes really well with the Roman Schmall ones. Not to mention this dusk pink Rembrandt paint. Oh, look at that. It's already separating and looking so gorgeous. Gosh, I love it. Right. Um, Beside that, we've got two more on this row. The next one is the Daniel Smith Sugalite. So we'll pop him in there. So this is a slightly pearlescent kind of colour as well. Really pretty. Greyish violet colour. And then finally, we have Daniel Smith Luna Violet. And this is another one that's always been in this palette. I've loved this colour for a long time. Ever since I first saw it. It's a really nice granulating colour too. So moving on to the third row, the next one we have is Roman Schmall's Misty Morning, which is a really lovely name for a paint. <laughs> and it is again a very beautiful um, separating colour. I just love how all of these Roman Schmalls I've got just go together so well. When I first set up this palette I didn't really know very much about the Roman Schmall paints at all. 
but I would definitely, if I was setting up a palette from scratch now, I'd definitely include more Roman Schmore paints. So the next one along is Daniel Smith Soda Light. This is the most gorgeous sort of inky blue. It's a very interesting paint. I'm so glad I have this one. Right, I think I'm really going to have to start doing these swatches a bit smaller, aren't I? I'm not going to fit them in. Look at that colour. It granulates too, which is really nice. So we have another dark blue. This is the Mayan dark blue from Daniel Smith. I'm going to do a little little pebble shaped one. So yeah, I ran a light fast test on this because I'd heard that it does fade. Um, it showed absolutely no signs of fading in my test, which was interesting. Um, I'm wondering whether if you use it in a wash that it might fade a bit more, but because I tend to use it like this, I think I may get away with it. Um, this is another new one I'm swatching now. This is the um, M. Graham Anthraquinone Blue, I believe it is. Anthraquinone, yeah, not anthraquinoid. I've just written anthra blue on my chart there because I couldn't fit it all in. So I'd liked the look of this paint for a long time and I'd had it on my Jackson's wish list for a while. But I think it was when I saw it on one of Sarah Burns' videos. Um, the YouTuber I mentioned earlier, not just YouTuber, artist and YouTuber <laughs> I mentioned earlier, I um, I thought it looked so gorgeous that I just had to get it because it's slightly different to the other dark blues I have. Look at how that soda light is separate and uh, not separating, granulating now. See all of these are dark blues but they all look so different. Um, but this is why I didn't want to put the indigo back in because I do think I would have had a few too many <laughs> if I'd have put that in as well. But the next one is Daniel Smith's Kyanite. So this one also has a slight sparkle to it. I'm just going to do these a little bit smaller because I'm really worried I'm running out of space. But this is quite an interesting paint as well. There's lots of particles in this one and looks very much a greyish blue. So the Payne's Grey I've chosen for this palette because naturally it had to have at least one Payne's Grey in there was the Daniel Smith Payne's Blue Grey which is a particularly lovely Payne's Grey. Swatch that there. I do love my Payne's greys um, with quite a bit of blue in them. Look at that, it's beautiful. You could say that it is kind of similar to the Soda Light and the, um, what was that one? <laughs> Mayan Dark Blue. I've heard some people call it Mayan Blue Dark. I don't know whether it's Blue Dark or Dark Blue. Um, it's kind of similar but they all have a slight difference and because I love to use these kind of dark moody colours in my work it's actually worth me having several that are just slightly different to each other. Um, I just feel like they all bring something different. I just think it's so pretty. Pretty in a dark moody way. <laughs> Maybe pretty isn't the right word. Um, they are stunning though. Right, the next one along is um, Daniel Smith Jane's Grey. So this has more of a slight violet tint to it rather than or shade, whatever you want to say. So again, it fits in really well with those ones and it's just slightly different. I mean, if you weren't such a fan of dark blues, <laughs> 
you obviously wouldn't need to have all of these in your palette. It's not necessary, but because I'm a huge fan of this kind of colour, this is what I mean by putting together your own palette. You just, you go with what inspires you and, um, you know, everyone is different. This is the thing. This is a very, very... Um, I hesitate to call it weak colour, like um, <laughs> has a low tinting strength, is that what you'd say? Um, it's the Roman Schmall Lazurite, um, and I just loved it because I thought it would be the perfect um, paint for, for example, like if you have um, a sort of slightly overcast day and the sky is just this really pale bluish grey. I just love that. I love the subtlety of this one. It goes really nicely with these other blues um, and these violets as well. Right, so the next one is quite a contrast. <laughs> it's um, the Daniel Smith French Ultramarine, which um, I think came in the... I'm going to put that there, actually. Which I think came in the Essentials Mixing Set. Um, so, yeah, this is in my palette as a mixing colour. because I probably wouldn't to use this colour. I don't know, maybe I would in like a night landscape. It might make a, a really interesting hill if it was kind of, I mean, I have done that before. I've used a brighter blue as one of the hills and it looks quite striking against like dark inky blues. But um, generally speaking, I'd use that as a mixing colour. So this is Daniel Smith Luna Blue. And this is a really interesting granulating colour. I love that you can already see it sort of separating and granulating there. This is actually making me want to um, do a painting and make like different coloured pebble shapes. I think that could look really nice, especially with the granulating colours. The texture that they have is really nice. I kind of wish I'd mixed more water with some of these up here. I should have done, really. You'll have to forgive me for that. Um, you're getting an idea of how they look. Right, this one is Daniel Smith of Thalo Turquoise. So where should we put that? Maybe we'll put that one down here. This is such a stunning colour. Look at that. Really beautiful. I think you have to have a turquoise in your palette, really. I think someone was saying to me this is a good mixing colour. I really need to experiment with mixing more. I may be making some more videos about that, perhaps on my Patreon. Right, this one is, right, we're on the fourth row now, and this is the Daniel Smith Cobalt Teal. Yeah, all of the paints that I just mentioned, um, they were in my palette before. Yeah, the Anthraquinone Blue, we said that was a new one, didn't we? Um, Anthraquinone Blue, that's that one. And the Roman Schmall Lazurite, that's a new one as well. But the French Ultramarine, Luna Blue, Thalo Turquoise, James Grey, all of those, they were in the palette before. The Cobalt Teal was in the palette before, but we're now going to swatch a new one. I'm really excited about this one. Absolutely love this one. And it's so funny because I hesitated to get it thinking, do I need this color? And then I saw it swatched out on YouTube by somebody and I was just like, yeah, I definitely need that color. I think it may have been Eve Bolt, Ev Bolt. I don't know whether she's an Ev or an Eve. <laughs> um, Eve Bolt um, on her channel and uh, yeah. It's a Schmincke Horror Dam limited edition ocean grey and I was just like, oh my goodness, that is a really quite an unusual colour. So it's this gorgeous granulating um, sort of grey blue. Almost has like a hint of green to it. Pairs nicely actually with the Daniel Smith Luna Blue. So the next one along was one I had to wait for quite a while to get because it was out of stock on Jackson's but I was determined to get it because I'd seen it swatched out and um, I was just like I really need this one. <laughs> 
This is um, Vivianite and again like all the Roman Schmoll paints it's lovely and sort of creamy. It's this beautiful, I think it's called, its full name is Vivianite Blue Ochre but I kind of feel like it's got this hint of green to it. It's just such a beautiful natural colour. I love it. So I'm really pleased to have that in my palette. So that's a new one as well. Next up, Schmincke Horodam Forest Blue. This is one of their special edition granulating colours. Um, and this was in my palette before. It's a really interesting colour because it kind of separates a little bit. It looks really dark green when you first, you first put it on the paper, but it will gradually separate out a little bit and you'll see blue in there and just has a really interesting texture as well. Gosh, I'm having to do these last ones quite small because I'm really frightened I'm not going to fit them in. Okay, the next one is a new one as well. This is the Sennelier Greenish Umber. Now I was on there to buy something else, another Sennelia paint, and I just happened to see this one on Jackson's and I was just like, that looks like a really beautiful colour. <laughs> so um, it was a bit of an impulse purchase, but it's one of the favourite, my favourite colours that I have um, bought recently. Sorry, these ones are going to have to be so small to actually fit them in, but just look how gorgeous all of these um, dark greens and the blues are looking. You see this is very much a Natasha Newton palette. Um, it's not really set out in the traditional way a watercolour palette would be and I know that a lot of you are going to think there are so many similar colours in here but this is the beauty of putting together your own palette. You just you go with whatever inspires you. It's whatever makes you want to paint. I think that's the important thing. That's what a palette should do. And, you know, if you wanted to fill your palette entirely full of blues, you could, or entirely full of greens. It's just up to you. It's the colours you use in your work, the colours that inspire you. I mean, depending on the kind of painter you are. It's like I'm mainly a landscape and nature painter, so I'm going to have a certain palette. Um, but somebody else who is a portrait painter or a painter of animals, for example, will have a totally different palette. And, um, and it's fine. And some people like palettes with just, say, six colours so that they can mix everything. And that's good too. I mean, if that's what you prefer and that's what you're into. Um, I just don't think there's a right way or a wrong way. I think there are too many, I was gonna say there are too many rules in the art world, which is ironic really, because you'd think of artists as being rule breakers. They're the sort of mavericks of the world <laughs> rather than the, the rule followers. But there are actually so many artists who seem to be so obsessed with the rules and, and I actually find it quite restrictive. So I've learned that you can actually just do whatever you want. There aren't, well, there are certain rules. There are certain technical rules, I guess, in art. But when it comes to colours, just go with what you love. Anyway, that one, <laughs> did I say that this one was Schwinker Horadam, Cobalt Green Dark, and this was Daniel Smith rare green earth and then the next one is a Holbein colour this is Davies Grey I might have to put shall I put Davies Grey down there mm, I don't know yes maybe I will <laughs> so it's Davies Grey but it's really green um, and I just saw this I was like my goodness this is a beautiful colour because I love these um, softer greens as well so you see at the moment I haven't got anything in here that is like your classic sap green, grass green kind of colour or leaf green even. But I can mix those with the yellows and the um, French ultramarine that I have. And also I've got another new one coming up. So yes, that's a new one by the way, the Davies Grey. The Cobalt Green Dark and the Rare Green Earth I had in here before. 
But the next one coming up is a new colour. <laughs> you might remember this one from one of my fairly recent art hauls where I was deliberating over whether to buy more watercolours because I've kind of put myself on a ban. It's the May Mary Blue Green Gold. So I could also mix um, some of the greens, the darker greens with this. And I'm sure we could come up with some interesting mixes. I need to do that. I think it would be good for me to play around with mixing a little bit more. Okay, we're down to the last three now. So these are, we've got a couple of kind of earthy colours here. I've got Daniel Smith's Bloodstone. We're just about going to fit them in, aren't we? That's a beautiful granulating colour. It's quite an earthy colour, but it's got this kind of, hard to describe, maybe a slightly violet undertone or something. I think it's a really pretty colour. I don't know whether that comes across on camera, but in reality, it's gorgeous. And so for my dark brown, um, I've got Jackson's own brand, Warm Sepia. I love sepia. For me, it's a very versatile colour. And it's one that I always like to have in my palette. Either that or... Raw Umber, that's another brown I tend to love. I haven't got a Raw Umber in this palette actually, but I think with this, the Bloodstone, the Venetian Red, I think I could probably, and I could probably mix more browns, couldn't I, let's be honest. The final one is the M. Graham Neutral Tint. This is another new one. Oh, it's very gloopy. It's really, um, you can tell these have a lot of honey in them. So let me try to dilute this one a bit because I'd like you to see it a little bit more diluted. It's a good thing we left a slightly larger space for him, I think. I'm still going to struggle, aren't I, to make it diluted enough I think but yeah this is kind of taking over from my lamp black that I had in here but it's also a great mixing colour and I happen to think it looks really nice on its own let's just lift some of that out so you can really see so there we are. I'm just going to leave those to dry and then I'm going to hold them up so you can see them a lot more clearly. So here's how they look. I feel like I like these ones down here more, <laughs> but I feel like I haven't done justice to the Roman Schmall Shadow Violet, this one here. I feel like I've captured it better on this tiny swatch here than I did on this large one. Um, I should have given it more space to move around. It needs to be more diluted. So, um, yeah, a bit disappointed about that, but it does give you a good idea of the different colors in this palette, even though the swatches aren't perfect. So what I'd like to know is, do you have a favorite from this palette? What is your favorite? Let me know in the comments below, because I'm always interested to hear which ones are people's favorites. And also let me know which colors or color, <laughs> color or colors, you couldn't live without in your palette. Um, because you never know, I may discover some more colours. <laughs> Not that I need any more colours, but um, being a bit of a colour addict and a colour palette addict, I really do love to discover new ones that I may not previously have known about. Um, I think, what should we say our little catchphrase is for the end of this video? Um, if you've made it to the end, leave a comment below saying, I like big palettes and I cannot lie. I think that's what our little phrase should be at the end of this video. If you write that in the comment section below, I will know for sure that you have made it to the end of this mammoth long video. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really enjoyed sharing my new palette with you and I look forward to seeing you again in another video very soon.